right, we're going to take a few minutes to talk about um, the review worksheet and then the stuff from the book. Um, I'm just going to put N for non-metal for the first element and um, M if it's a metal. And then I'll write the bond type over there. So Na is a metal. This is a non-metal. And to tell you the truth, all of these, all the way down, are going to be non-metal. So it's a second element. It doesn't matter if it's covalent or ionic. It's always a non-metal. So the S here is a non-metal. The P is a non-metal. Mg is a metal. Ca is a metal. H is a non-metal. K is a metal. Al is a metal. For, I guess I'm going to say that's Na because there's only one element here that's a non-metal. Cu is a metal. N is a non-metal. C is a non-metal. H is a non-metal. Rubidium, Rb is a metal. And N is a non-metal. So we can go back through here and anything that has an M in it gets an I for ionic. Anything that has an N gets a C. So I, C, C, I, I, C, I, I, C, I, C, 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 I, C. And then we'll move it up. So it's on Fe2O3. So that's a metal, non-metal, non-metal, non-metal. So this is ionic. That one's covalent. So flip it over to the back. So we did one together in class. Let's go down to two, Ca um, and Cl. Ca has two dots, Cl has seven dots. So one of the dots for Ca is gonna go there. The other dot has to go there. So it's Ca, Cl, two. Aluminum oxide. Al has three dots, O has six, so these two dots can go there. We've got an extra dot, so we need to make another O. So that dot can go there. Um, so the Al is happy, but the O is, is not, so we need to make another Al. That dot can go there. Make another O for these two dots to go to. So the formula is Al2O3. Sodium oxide, Na has one dot, O has six. So one dot can go there, I need to make another Na. So it's Na2O. Sodium nitride, Na has one dot, nitrogen has five. So one dot can go there, we need another dot there. Another dot there, so the formula is Na3N. And then magnesium phosphide. Mg has two dots, phosphorus has five. So we can send those two dots over. Mg needs another one. I mean, sorry, P needs another one. Um, then we gotta get rid of this from Mg, so we make another P. And then the P needs two more dots, so it's Mg3P2. Down at the bottom part, we did number one. So number two, carbon tetrabromide. Carbon has four dots. Bromine has seven. So that's going to be shared. We have to share another one. That's what it looks like. And then dihydrogen monoxide. Um, H, we'll have two H's here. One O. Just like that. All right, let's talk about the stuff in the book. So 
See if I can get this up here. So number three is the first one you were supposed to do. It says list two differences between ionic bonds and covalent bonds. Um, so we'll say ionic involves ions and the attraction of opposite charges. Covalence involves electron sharing. Try that again. Electron sharing. And no ions. Then you were supposed to do 7 through 13. So let's do 7, 8, 9 first. Number 7, compounds that are made of molecules um, tend to not have high melting points. A chemical bond can be defined as a force that joins atoms in a compound. A compound is different from, from a mixture because... A compound is held together by chemical bonds. So let's look at 10 through 13. Number 10, ionic solids are formed by, by networks of ions that have, okay, sorry. Ionic solids are formed by networks of ions that have the same charge. That's wrong, melt at very low temperatures, have very regular structures. That's the best answer. Crystals of table salt, sodium chloride, are made of a network of ions. The compound Blake, an example of an ionic compound. The only one on here that's ionic is KCl because the K is a metal. And the chemical formula for calcium chloride is, let's draw it, Ca has two, Cl has seven. So one there, we've got to have another Cl. So it's Ca, Cl2. Let's look at the next page. On the next page, you were supposed to answer, let's just start with 17 and 18. So number 17, it says name the following covalent compounds. This should be real simple. This is, I'll put A right here. S is sulfur. Tetra fluoride. Letter B, dinitrogen. Monoxide. Letter C, phosphorus. Trichloride. Letter D, diphosphorus. Pentoxide. Remember, if it's covalent, it gets prefixed. It's the only time we don't give a prefix if, it's, if the first element only has one. Then we just call it what it is. Number 18, noble gases such as helium and neon have full, stable, outer level electron configurations. How does this fact explain why atoms of noble gases usually do not form chemical bonds? Um, bonds form to make elements stable. Noble gases are all ready stable. So they don't need to form bonds. Number 21. says a classmate claims that sodium gains a positive charge when it becomes an ion uh, because it gains a proton. Explains what's wrong with this. 
So I'll put 21 right here. Um, Na loses an electron and has a positive charge because it now has one more proton than electron. And the last one was number 23. 23 says the melting point of ionic compounds with cations in the same group um, follow a pattern. So cations are positive ions, so that's the metal. So in this table, we're talking about the Mg, the Ca, the Sr, the Ba. To see this, plot the melting point of each of the ionic compounds in the table. Um, below on the y-axis and the atomic number on the x-axis. What trend do you notice? So I plotted this for you. So this is what it looks like. So I put the atomic number down here, the melting point over here, and you can see the smaller the atomic number, the smaller the melting point. I even went all the way up to, um, they ask about the last element, radium, in group number two, so I put radium all the way out here, where it would be following the trend. So A, what trend do you notice in the melting points as you move down group two? So as atomic number increases, comma, MP, which stands for melting point, also increases. Letter B, the compound um, beryllium Chloride has a melting point of 405. Is this likely to be an ionic compound? Explain. Locate beryllium in the periodic table. Well, beryllium is a metal. Um, it's all, it would be the metal above magnesium on the periodic table. So it's ionic. And the reason why Be is a metal. It also even though 405 is lower than 714, um, it's still a lot higher than the boiling point of water. Most covalent molecules have melting points lower than the boiling point of water. Letter C, predict the melting point of the ionic compound radium chloride. So I put that on here. Radium has an atomic number of 88, which is all the way down here. So its melting point is right in here, which is about a little bit over 1,100. So let her see 1,100 degrees Celsius. So let's look at what's going to be on the test. So I'm going to give you two different pieces of information. If you are in the honors class, this is what, this is how the questions are divided up. If you're in the regular class, this is how the questions are divided up. So there's, in the honors, there's nine questions about ionic bonds, five about covalent, 13 about either writing the name or writing the formula, four about reactivity, and nine about valence electrons. If you're in the regular class, there's seven about ionic bonds, three about covalent um, bonds, 10 about writing names and formulas, one about reactivity, and 10 about valence electrons. Every, every class period, I've recorded a class and put it on, made a YouTube video over it. So if you wanna go back and view those YouTube videos, all you have to do is click on the announcement um, for that day, and there should be a video that comes up. Another good way to study for this test is to look at the old worksheets, quiz yourself with the old worksheets and the old questions from the book and make sure that you can answer all of those. All right, have a good weekend.